Hello, and um, welcome to some more um, learning. Uh, right now, we're going to learn about the prosodic unit and how um, it's worth more than money and it's worth more than anything. And about uh, basically how live weight is measured and how the body is measured in uh, multiple ways to your intellectual property um, by just declaring. Uh, you have your own intellectual property. It's just like international waters. It goes in the physics of water and is based on how that works. <clears throat> um, here is a uh, face. It kind of resembles what it feels like to have um, one product unit um, as a animal. If the body was buried, it would look more like this instead of look like dead skeletons and stuff because uh, your body is basically contained inside of the foot um, if you have to think of something that says uh, you know I'd like to have sex or not with you and you thought that was the end of a uh, conversation well it's not it always has to do with prosthetic feet and it has to do with a step a metric foot, a poetry foot and um, it can be measured with a uh, following proof with his momentum and I'm going to show you a, a quick uh, Wikipedia reference for you. Here is the uh, prosodic unit which has to do with a uh, prosodic contour which um, is the outline of something that will be printed. Here's the prosodic unit. There's more information about it. Um, there's a lot about this, and um, it's time to really realize that it's much more powerful than the internet now. And uh, it's very what we have all been working on. And I, I really wanted to just see a way where I could turn off certain features of my life by understanding more about the sonic unit, such as death and to just being able to die when I say, you know, someone else can take a step. And it looks better than mine, you know, because I know how my face is built. And how it, like a corner of a house is my, where my nose is here, or other things besides that atrocity. And um, here you can see how it has to do with the um, complete utterance and the metrical foot. Complete utterance would be also a complete uh, fart, you know, not one that is smaller than something larger. To go with uh, the weights of everything having the same, you know, you know, the same weight and balance as everything else. Um, it has to do with a decision, which is why religion is involved, and it has to do with, you know, letting the things that fall be measured while they fall. You know, uh, someone could worship a building, but really, you know, the building must have significance. And a reason to go to in front. It needs a prosodic unit to be measured so that more things can be measured using the prosodic unit. So that each person is a prosodic unit. Um, and everything's labeled for it. Uh, let's just go into how uh, prosodic units have actually taken over measurement and um, are much more smoother than the internet. So I'll walk this way. And here, um, I can demonstrate how a long time ago, you know, people used to, um, you know, not have a lumber company with trees and everything measured perfectly. Which are what we use now as prosthetic units and steps, which is a little bit more complicated now. We have dancers and others, and this is government officials with just natural happenings. They really do govern how things happen. Um, but the thing about it is, is that uh, a tree, you know, also has limbs and um, has a person that people have to emulate it. It has to group up in some areas so we can communicate with the tree. You know, and all trees that we cut down, you forgot about it. You know, if something has, you know, hand-shaped limbs, you know, then that would be the person. And also, um, when the trees cut down, you know, it will hurt 
um, a little bit if you don't measure the prosthetic unit. And um, usually we'll be um, using a foot step. Um, everyone will die before the foot step, or everyone will get into the movement, not actually die. So we'll get into the movement of the foot step when it's measured. It's usually an upper and a bottom, it's a top and bottom, you know, for your science nerds. You know, quarks and everything. Think about that. Think about top and bottom. The other two. You really realize that just one prosthetic step is much more, you know, information than dividing things further down. So we have one step. You know, usually it has to do with uh, pornographic thoughts that people have, or you know, anything that has to do with evolving off another person. But we are over reflecting. That has to do with us pumping up a muscle on this side and then pumping the next one on this one and having enough conversation with this hand to have it out of the product unit from the union and uh, relating distances from, you know, one measurement to another or, you know, how I look to something else. And then we'll start one, two, three, and then I'll have to use, uh, you know, probably um, fractions. You can also use multiplication. You know, you can use a lot of things in math with the product unit. And, um, what you can do with this product unit is, uh, with these three steps, you know, we have three product units, or just one house would be also, you know, everything that can be measured, but it has to be a product unit. So if we measure this three feet, three to five feet, it doesn't have to be just 12 inches, but it's bigger than most. You know, one, two, three. And then here's this corner. I can use math to fill in one, two, three, and one, two, three if I want. Or I could use actual, you know, kind of my steps, but an actual measurement is a prosthetic unit. So if you have an argument and you feel like someone else is taking up your face, but you aren't part of their face, and they are part of your face, then that extra area there is the cathodic unit which has to be measured. It's a social dynamic because um, <coughs> trying to look past infinity when it comes to measuring uh, metric feet. You don't have an infinite amount of feet when you're measuring because surviving has to do with you know only making it to a certain point. And there's no reason to see any further than that because you would be really, you know, you would look at your something else. Because it's more like an, you know, an infinity. You know, I think it would stop at some point. I don't think that it would continue if that is the feeling we get when we don't understand a prosodic unit. We would need to survive, obviously. Uh, intact information. It's like having a wave actually not be interrupted. Now, how do I interrupt a wave? I've seen lots of ways that a wave can be interrupted somehow. But anyway, um, Obviously, ecstatic. Like maybe that would do something with the way. All right, so um, we have a uh, crane with a ball that's swinging, and we also have uh, someone holding a potato unit of something to drink, which would be water. I'll pump up the arm one time when it's like you know, it's receiving a potato unit, you know, or has some potato unit in it. And then it lets go after the drink. It's like an episode. It's the moment of drama when you know, it is drinking. You know, and um, after you finish drinking it, <clears throat> you can see something else pass through in momentum. When I'm falling in the direction, you know, I need to actually be able to, you know, actually fall. And um, it's momentum, you know, also, and something that can pack. Looking at breasts and how hard it would be to pinch it if you had to be someone else's breast is another thing. If you were a clown having sex, it's another thing that you would understand facing death and seeing how the prosthetic limb actually would be more of sexual nature. It would have to do with the weight of uh, the clown nose and uh, the clown hair, which is hair that's awake, kind of like tree limb. But to treat a person like a tree which is up like this and has all crazy distraught hair, it's actually really uncomfortable.
and um, <clears throat> and so it is basically one step as well, or you know, basically one unit. I'm going to go further on that in a second. So here we have um, one unit something going where it is supposed to go in physics. Understand one unit of measurement in the physics of how someone who was deceased should be buried in a clown costume. Bowling shoes and leather and white. And it's just the way that it's physics. Uh, if you eat lots of popcorn or watch Dave Chappelle. You know, you can see that one time where he was actually like wearing bowling shoes and eating just a piece of popcorn. You know, lots of popcorn and in a little bag of home popcorn where you can open it up and it in the bag and you can smell the consistency of what it would be like to just drink, you know, really dry um, popcorn, make it yourself. Uh, pressed butter, probably. You can't really think of that without a prosthetic unit. And here, you know, the hair being woken up and the nose being like this is also like the measurement of breast being pulled on. Or if people do it right, you know, these people have the ball like this and would say, you know, I love you, baby, you know, whoever you are, and it would have a clown nose. But it can look like broken things and things that are not a prosthetic unit. And um, that's something that socially we need to learn how to fix instead of run away from the very physical things that would cause aging, etc. Um, because the prosthetic unit must be measured, you know, in order to know how much force is uh, that we have. So really, no choice when you realize how a um, you know there is kissing though. Choice is a uh, way to kiss, you know, probably in the prosthetic unit. Let's go over that. Um, here we have a kiss is a prosodic unit. Uh, it also says free air. That's a good way to measure it is uh, you could kiss yourself in the mirror. You know, as long as it is a prosodic unit, you know, back to yourself, you envision it. But you cannot kiss nothing and you cannot kiss, um, you know, something that cannot kiss back as well. So when I envision myself facing myself, I would have to use the physics of my body expanding, you know, you know to uh, close off this uh, kiss circulation with myself. I'd have to kiss myself with my prosthetic unit because free air and I can take it on the other side and take my free air. But I could also use someone else's lips that is not my property or theirs. You know, that would be a prosthetic unit that has space and um, is basically the very unit of... Um, you know, definitely uh, probably one air bubble uh, probably being counted somewhere or one emission but it has to be a full emission you know, just like how a cat goes like this and then goes out with their hands and mashes potatoes one moment you know one movement of that well it's just like being a cat in space or something so yeah it has to have gravity as a rule <clears throat> um here we have a decreasing echo and an increasing echo, and in the middle we have um, the same echo leveled using prosodic units given in a uh, medium, like an actual average and an actual statistical data. Uh, one prosodic unit would have an even understandable level and of an echo which goes down like this. Give it three dimensions, the prosodic unit would. Give it 3D has in dimensions, like the weight and everything and how that moves. Actual physics, not actually 3D, but understand like the comparison with 2D and 1D is also uh, prosodic unit. Um, anyway, it has to go also with the physical dimension. You know, it has to go with 3D as well. And so, um, that would give density to an echo. Echo. You know, that's three prosthetic units, and it's also one prosthetic unit because it's what it is. You can see how, you know, they can be used to measure things.
But a kiss to no one or to a disaster or a car wreck cannot be one episodic unit because in counting the unit there must be something to uh, receive and count the unit. And there has to be some person to count the unit that is uh, actually there instead of disasters which is a person. So you can't actually measure a episodic unit or have one if it isn't between life and um, You cannot have it. There has to be actually something that can pass something through it. Like a worm, you know, it would have one unit of dirt, and it would squeeze it out and finish it. And once it's completely done, it's all gone. You know, and it's after some new dirt. You know, then you know that would be that one prosodic unit. And it has to be a full emission. You know, it's just like plants uh, breathing and people breathing. It's basically, the same form of nature. You have to actually do that with nature. You have to understand that it's it's it feels very nice. And um, here we learn, you know, a non-prosodic unit is non-responsive. And it's as if uh, someone could receive a kiss but did not. You know, it's like if you're like this, but there was nothing there to actually give you a kiss instead of like better looking. It has to look right. That wasn't it either. But it has to be able to pop out a prosodic unit has to be there in order for there to be something there. I couldn't receive anything. You know, so it's like something is not counted. And that is something that has to do with either being social or being antisocial. And probably both. But um, I think that it has to do with the fact that communication is required. And um, you have to communicate between yourself and you have to use it. Um, here we have... Um, the fact that we learn a prosodic unit is responsible for counting one unit of motion. And we can tell here, uh, further demonstrate, there is no feedback on these two. You know, and on here, we have feedback. With feedback, you know, um, that means that something emitted it on this side and something emitted on this side. It's a physic. When sound travels, it has to hit a physical boundary. The sound has to hit a physical boundary, and um, <clears throat> it has to be able to echo back to that boundary in order for the sound to have been emitted. Um, that's something that has to be understood, um, because you know if you looked at it like it was actually a true space, there has to be something moving and revolving, and it does require life to move it. And um, one prosodic unit also could kind of be measured like this, kind of a spatial direction, um, kind of like this, with the muscle flexing, and it goes in all directions, but there is a clear point and direction in the middle of it. Um, here you know, we have, you know, it says uh, one prosodic, that was a prosodic unit, and this part is a non-prosodic unit to measure this, it also is a prosodic unit. But it is a still physical area where someone has a, you know, and there's not my hand. You know, before it was like this, and then I let go. And now when I do this again, you know, it should be able to count something, and it would be, you know, one unit. Kind of like um, this. And it's when uh, the muscles can be used. And they have to be used. <clears throat> so there has to be a prosodic unit. There's also a prosodic spill. Um, but prosodic units are non-prosodic when accidental. It's just when you know, things that are uh, actual disasters that have caused something um, that are not using feedback and not being able to be expressed in that way are not really classifiable as that. And it's uh, when someone... Most of the time, it's when someone still has eye contact and actually changed eye contact, and then it builds again here, you know, where the contents of what was seen empties out and was not seen. It gives us a dry feeling there, where there was no, um, I guess it turns around and faces another person, which is the disasters and things that you know, did not be them in the episodic part of a prophetic moment, which, you know, you have to kind of absorb what was here. And then take it in like a sleep, and then you have to open the eyes and then see again. You know, that's 
what it is like and you have to do a thing and then you count it and then you, you, you open the rest you know you see everything before and then you absorb it and then you open up and you put what you've taken and you put it in this and give it a good sleep give it a good meal give it a good understanding of what else does it need and then it will open up on the other side and it's filling up a cup and emptying it out you know it's one unit and um anyway so that precise unit is the law. I mean, if you really looked at international law and uh, looked at just making a decision with yourself and looking at your own body's anatomy, you know, you'll learn, you know, that uh, following through is momentum. And you will learn that, you know, disasters definitely people do represent them. And, uh, you know, um, a prosodic unit is a foot. And you can look at your feet all day long and understand a prosodic unit. So, you know, went over the footsteps and how people measure things and you know, how we could walk up this way, up these levels, walking upwards this way, up against the wall, and just measuring that way. Or, you know, it all has to do with emotion. It all has to do with good feelings. It has to do with bad feelings, where things should go. is what it always is. You know, well, where the things should stay. You know, there's a lot of things that have to do with it. And of course, you know, being buried uh, with makeup is usually different than actually being buried with clown costume and gear. I think if I had, you know, a clown nose, it'd be a nose and it would wobble. And someone would know what to do with it. You know, just like when you go to a bar and someone's friendly, it can help you if you can find something. Um, carries all of your prosodic weight, all your prosodic um, momentum, all your prosodic step. So, you know, I think uh, probably the most important thing to do probably for the rest of your life, and probably for the rest of mine, and probably the rest of society and public science, is to just understand um, how to measure, you know, a metric foot. Um, and just realize how that really does line up with everything. And, you know, also you can think about punching and how, you know, really a fist and it letting go is much more peaceful if the hands relax. You know, we play all day looking at other people who would fight, who would want to be with, who would want to win, who would want to look better today, tomorrow, or five minutes from now. If I change my mind, I always change it. Exotic news to see, you know, how you know nasty freaking plastic you're looking foot is, but you know, it has to look at a good angle. If that was a bad angle, then um, it wouldn't be a prosodic unit. And it has to have an episode, it has to have what you want it to be, you know, and it has to matter. You know, and it will have to make you laugh or have to make you cry, it might have to make you care about someone or put something there. You know, keep something around. You know, but that is the point of the cathodic unit. And it's the very thing that we go through every day. It's when, you know, you're working and let's say, you know, you're doing construction like me and everybody's taking a break and I decide to work a little bit harder. You know, where I'll just be extra Spanish and courteous like Spanish people. And usually we just carry twice the man's weight if we can. You know, um, in places where we actually can, you know, or you carry more work than someone else and people relax and they have relaxed weight here. You have all these prosodic units which make you work harder. When you paid for those prosodic units, you know, when you wanted to succeed, when you talked to yourself, when you said, you know, left leg, um, right leg, step today, you know, and you're it's like, in it and yes, you know, and it did, you know, that is what matters, you know, and you can't live without it and you can die without it because, you know, there is no, you know, way that there is not such thing as a, um, um, prosodic foot, but there is definitely, you know, a prosodic foot, prosodic unit 
it has to do with our own boundaries, like cards. You know, sometimes you know angles that we're at, camera angles and high angles and decision angles, can all really show us that you know looking like something is different than looking like it and having a episodic unit.